change. Micro Mega has released results for 15 months. Greg Morris, CEO of Micro Mega, joins us now for more. Greg, it seems like yesterday that you were in the studio. Of course, it was the other one. I think it's your first time in the JSE, so welcome to our studio in the JSE. Two issues. I think the one was the last time we spoke, you were talking consolidation. Uh, a new era for the company, getting some stuff out of the woodwork and, and clearing the deck. The other is that you've got a 15-month reporting period. Is this to try and confuse people? or <laughs> <laughs> Why did you move your year end and uh, explain what effects it's had? Okay. No, thank you. It's uh, really what happened is you might recall that Dave King reached his tax settlement in September last year. And off the back of that, we, 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 we as a group went into a more normalized environment, what we refer to as a normalized trading environment, where the stress, stresses and strains of managing the external factors that were coming at us with regards to reputational risk and other issues. Um, uh, we, we then took a view that, in fact, with that behind us, we want to have a first six months of clean trading. Uh, and we wanted to start benchmarking ourselves going forward off that six months. So we wanted a reportable period that the analysts in the market could look at and see pre-tax pre, pre matter, post-tax matter, mm -hmm. and the impact that would have on our trading environment. And that was, that was the rationale behind the, behind the move. The second comment was, it was tough at December, to have our year end. It was not, not a great time of year. We're service based, and I think for any company it was, we just found it rather cumbersome trying to get numbers out with the chaps mm. over the Christmas period. So mm. it was twofold, but really it was about having that fresh beginning. Mm. So, Greg, you've had that opportunity to engage in some clean trading, as you've said. Let's talk about the numbers. Uh, what do they say about the overall health of the company, and in particular, benchmarking it against your competitors in the industry? Yeah, I, th I think we, we're very comfortable with the state of our balance sheet. Our balance sheet has always been robust, and we've never geared ourselves in a manner that's, uh, that's uh, exposed us to any form of uh, sensitivity to interest rates and or debt management. So the balance sheet has been built uh, and continues to grow at a nice rate. So from a balance sheet perspective, well poised for acquisitions, uh, some liquidity on there, uh, which we're going to focus towards investing in, into further transactions. Uh, as far as the earnings go, I mean, the numbers speak for themselves, up 122% mm. um, uh, year on year. Uh, and that's just demonstrative of what happened in the last, uh, in the last um, six months. The first quarter traditionally of the calendar year is our slowest year for earnings growth, and that's uh, cyclical to our business. Um, and that's because of the service-based uh, nature of it, and primarily focused at Blue Chips Africa. And one knows it's a slow start to the year, typically January, and, and then February one starts getting a bit of traction. So we're very comfortable. We think that we're well poised. We've also got nice depth and diversification in the group um, that affords us the indulgence of enjoying the, the peaks and troughs of different cycles in the economy. So. We, we're quite fortunate we have some natural hedges between the various businesses. So if one's down, typically we're seeing the other, um, the other operations uh, enjoying the benefit of that particular move in the economy. Also, always nice to pay a dividend, which you've done, a gross dividend of uh, 20 cents for the year to end March. Now, you have a phrase in your, in your statement which is what is of importance. The board has good visibility into the anticipated group performance for the coming year and is pleased with the business climate. What does that mean? Well, the nature of our business allows us to look forward quite, quite uh, far down the track in terms of earnings. Um, in, in, the, in, in the months ahead, so the first six months, it's incredibly visible. Um, and that's, we have a very strong contractual annuity income component built into our business, and we have very strong commercial annuity components built in. And we've really focused around that. When we've made acquisitions, when we've bought, mm. and, uh, bought businesses in, we've tried to position ourselves as price makers. We haven't always been successful, but by being more on the price making side versus the price taking side, we've been able to afford ourselves the indulgence of commercial and contractual annuity components. So we've got good visibility. Um, and then, of course, we have a, a rolling forecast model which allows us to look very closely and in the greatest detail on a continuous basis 12 months ahead. Mm -hmm. And that's looking very, very good um, ex-acquisition. Mm -hmm. So as we sit here right now, we, we are comfortable to say to our shareholders that we don't anticipate an event risk. We, we'd rather be more prudent in our, in our approach to our earnings um, and ensure that we need, we need to have the visibility and we need to ensure our shareholders understand mm. what that visibility is going to look like over time. Obviously, forecasting in the public domain is something we can't do, uh, as we used to all do 10 years ago or so. But the reality is one's trying to create, from our perspective, we can, we can stand with confidence behind, the, behind mm. the stock price. That's really what it's all about. Just a quick one before we let you go, Greg. I mean, you've mentioned the acquisitions, but you've also had a bit of disposal of some of your interests. So you've changed the shape and the nature of the business a little bit. Let's throw forward uh, future growth prospects. Where do you see that coming from? Two primary areas, technology. Um, we're very focused in that area. We've, uh, that's where the first six months of this year has been invested in, in, in growth. Um, and then on the occupational health and safety side. Um, that is, those are the two areas that we enjoy in the highest level of growth, uh, and the margins are, 
are representing what we try and look for out of those two sectors. So that's where, that's where the focus and attention is going to be. Right, well, that is uh, Greg Morris, who is Chief Executive uh, of Micro Mega.